Right, good afternoon. Um, so, uh, basically, when, when uh, it must have been the end of last year, I think, when uh, TfL appointed Joe and the team uh, to do this bit of work uh, for, for us, really. And, and the, reason, the, reason it's for, the reason it's for TfL, really, is because obviously we've got a, a huge interest. I'm, I head up the urban design team in, in TfL. And we've got a huge interest in terms of uh, place making, uh, the streetscape, public realm in general. And uh, it, it seemed to us that really this was, a, a, this was long overdue and we needed to. We needed somebody. We needed a very good team, uh, which uh, Joe uh, has been heading up, including uh, Robert Bray uh, and others involved, uh, to, to to do this bit of work to sort of explore the opportunities uh, for incorporating suds into the public realm in, in London. And that's what this document is is basically about. Uh, uh, <laughs> This is very, very simplistic, uh, which is, uh, I, I, no excuses for that because I'm not an expert in this at all actually, but uh, this really, this is about, for us, this is about the sort of intense events of rainfall which are increasingly happening in the capital uh, for climate change uh, and, and all sorts of reasons. Um, surface water runoff and then of course the, the risk of flooding and, and in London I'm sure in, in as we've seen in, in certainly in lots of other uh, cities and rural areas, uh, flooding's caused uh, major major issues, major problems, uh, disruptive uh, for people, and uh, and obviously sort of very very dangerous and loss of life in certain instances. So uh, we take it very very seriously in in London indeed, um, and the mayor's uh, climate change adaptation strategy. Um, uh, has said that surface water flood risk is really the greatest short-term climate risk for London. And of course, sort of exacerbated by uh, the drainage system, which is, is, is pretty old uh, and has reached uh, capacity, or is very near reaching capacity, uh, in a lot of, lot of areas. Uh, well publicised a massive increase in, in population, uh, which has happened, I think it was February last year, we reached our uh, the 1939 <coughs> level of 8.6 million and by 2030, I think it'll probably be before that, uh, it's, it's forecast to be uh, 10 million. So huge amount, huge amount of population, drainage system at or near capacity, um, extensive areas in London obviously of impermeable paving, which is, which is an issue for the, uh, the surface water runoff um, with uh, an intense intensity and frequency of, of rainfall events, which uh, which which we've seen. It's also lots of other issues as well, soils and geography, which I I sort of won't go into. The GLA uh, has produced the London Sustainable Drainage Action Plan, which I'm sure you've probably all seen. Uh, it's been out for consultation, uh, and is has now been signed off. Um, which is which is which is great, and and the, the sort of the, the principal aim of that document really was was the sort of a long term plan intended to inspire, facilitate, uh, and coordinate a, a sort of step change in water management in London. Uh, I'm really about seeing rainwater, as we've heard with all the sort of uh, talks this afternoon, rainwater not seen as a, 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 an unwanted byproduct, but really an asset which we should. We should try and sort of capture, use, delay, and absorb. Uh, Cuda. I don't know if that's what uh, that's what people say, but that that's uh, that, that's basically what it is. And it, uh, about sort of uh, certainly at the heart of that is peeling back a lot of these impermeable surfaces and uh, and creating this sort of mosaic of green, sustainable drainage systems. Uh, so there we are. No, nice graphic to say uh, that really the, the, the crucially. The aim is not to reject rainfall as a waste byproduct, but see rainfall as an asset with all the uh, uh, attendant benefits of that. So, uh, London Sustainable Drainage Action Plan, this is the GLA's document. Uh, that's going to be launched an event on the 17th of November, which I'm sure you're all welcome to come along to. 
Uh, this is going to be at the NLA in Store Street. Frederic is going to be speaking about what they've been doing in Lyon. Uh, this <coughs> is the, the NSD AP is going to be launched. And hopefully, we've got a couple of hurdles to, to, uh, to clear. But the SUDS manual as well, which is what we're going to talk about. So sorry to ramble on about that, but I thought it was a good, useful background. Um, so why did we produce it? Well, I, I think I've sort of alluded to that already, really, that, that um, TFL, can, TFL is about sort of, uh, a lot of what TFL does is about, is about placemaking, increasingly so with streetscape guidance that's been produced uh, uh, and a lot of the other guidances around stations, uh, the station forecourts, uh, how we use the spaces, how, how people experience those spaces. Uh, and uh, really, SUDS, we recognise, can contribute to the, the quality of those public spaces, to the placemaking which has been uh, so fantastically illustrated in the, uh, the, the talks that we've had so far today, and in, in London, as in other cities, it's a sort of, it's not unique to London, this figure, but 80% of uh, the public, the public realm in, 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 in London is, is made up of the streets, the roads, the footways, and the paths. And by, big, by far the biggest majority of, or the biggest proportion of that is the streets. Uh, so that's pretty, that's pretty key, and we think, uh, uh, you, you think about, SUDS uh, as, as being able to sort of transform the, uh, the streets that we've got at the moment. Uh, that's quite a, a key message to get across and a key opportunity. Uh, so this is the document. It's not called uh, a design guide anymore. It's SUDS in London, a guide. Uh, it's a non-technical document. That's very important to be read alongside the, the sort of wonderful Bible, which is the, the, the Syria uh, manual for SUDS. Um, but it's... Uh, we think the audience is pretty wide. Uh, it's going to be for sort of politicians, for councillors, highway authorities, those that sort of design, build and operate, maintain uh, the streets and public realms. But we hope that it's going to be, it's going to inspire and inform not only people in London, uh, but also people across the country uh, in the same way that uh, Streetscape Gardens does, which we've, we, we've heard is being used in Havana. Uh, and it, it's also, I think we, uh, Istanbul uh, know about it and use it as well. So uh, uh, maybe, maybe that's a big ambition, but we hope that SUDS does that. Uh, we had a steering group, which was, uh, which was fantastic, uh, with all of these uh, represented and a lot of people from TFL. Of course, it was really important to try and get uh, the engineers, uh, those people within TFL, who, if we can get their buy-in, we can, we can actually start to to get to see more of it. Although that's not to say that TFL isn't doing stuff at the moment, it is. Um, but we did a big consultation on this um, between August and September. We were out for about five weeks. We've got a pretty tight uh, timeline that we're trying to follow. Uh, uh, we sent it out to 450 organisations and thank you to all of those uh, who responded. Um, and we've been revising the document and looking at all those comments, try to accommodate them where possible uh, to create what I think is now version... Nine. No, I think we're beyond that. I think we're 10, <laughs> if not 11. Um, so we've got, a, um, we've got a document which is actually, as we speak, is being designed. It's going to be part of the Streetscape Gardens family, if uh, people have seen that. If you've not, go online, have a look. It's well worth it. Um, and this... It's very brief. This is where I'll, I'll sort of shut up. But this is really about the uh, the contents of that. Apart from the introduction, which of course is setting the the scene, um, we talk about the principles of SUDS, the pillars, which uh, uh, Kevin was talking about and Roger was talking about. Uh, the London context, obviously, very important, but uh, some aspects not unique to London. But uh, there are some real challenges there. What the components are great long list of those, uh, how those could be applied in the London streets. And uh, Joe will show you some images uh, which are very good, which are indicative, but they show some of the challenges and opportunities in applying those. Uh, a plethora of case studies which were really well received in the consultation. 
uh, a bit about how you would go about implementing it, setting up a design team, um, and then some of the sort of cost benefits uh, for putting suds in, which of course is always a challenge, but how do you monetize the benefits uh, associated with that? I'll hand over to Thanks. Um, well, Sura, we're a tremendous um, support um, in this whole uh, uh, production. Um, and of course, we work very closely with with Kevin and with um, Tim O'Hare, soil scientists and civic engineers, as well as DWD and Jackson Coles. And um, we sort of pick up and uh, expect this to be used alongside the SUDS manual um, and, um, and to uh, help underpin the fact that everyone's been reinforcing that the drainage actually daylighting this water in our cities actually gives phenomenal opportunity and those are the four pillars of suds and that's the basic philosophy on which we all start our projects and um, uh, you know the benefits are, are very clear cut um, and uh, uh, and we want to uh, peel back as Robin said some of the um, uh, surfaces in order that they can be more responsive and mimic more closely um, natural process and our cities are full of a whole array of different environments and characters and constraints and opportunities so it's never one or the other but we've uh, and the place like London um, really has opportunity for all types um, uh, so urbanization has had a massive impact um, we've got to learn to be good neighbors, to talk about integrated water management, um, a catchment-based approach. London has 33 boroughs um, and um, over 890 sub-catchments. So it's, uh, you know, the Thames Tideway Tunnel is going to, to help, but it's not going to deal with everyday rainfall and, and it will not, um, and, and therefore SUDS is really the only option locally to deal with that rainfall where it falls and that is a community as much as a technical um, opportunity um, and the, some of the partnerships that we've heard earlier today um, that arise out of this is is fantastic and enables us all to understand our, our city environments much more closely to work more closely and for that sense of community ownership to be fostered through the process of bringing these projects about. Um, so the team um, is, is, is about getting the right team um, and, um, and early enough in the process. Um, and soils are variable. So the fact that London is on a chalk aquifer, but it also has a lot of clay, but it also has a lot of anthropogenic soils. And those can be, um, those can be designed um, and uh, structural soils and so on are a whole great opportunity. So geology is obviously fundamental, and um, uh, as is the soil conditions, in order to investigate the potential for the capacity of the system. Um, and uh, quite a lot of uh, the, uh, those early opportunities can be sought and, and sort of worked out if the right expertise is on board, such as a soil scientist. Um, the, the, I mean, we have enormous in London variable, um, not only character of uh, space um, and urban environments, but also, um, you know, with a lot of historic assets, um, the heritage, the archaeology below the ground is 2,000 years old. and. Um, and yet there's still, there is opportunity in these environments, especially as we come to um, um, uh, doing routine maintenance and taking that opportunity to grasp uh, uh, a, a, an opportunity to integrate SUDS um, and therefore it being at no extra cost, or through road improvement schemes, which uh, TFL are doing all the time and have a, a, a large program. Um, and then, of course, there's existing green infrastructure, which is, which is throughout our city, and it's captured in the All London Green Grid. And uh, existing green infrastructure is a massive community asset, but it's also a massive asset in terms of SUDS 
the urban canopy um, uh, uh, has uh, enormous uh, impact in terms of um, interception. And, and also, as, as Kevin has said, it, it holds the soil open to be more absorbent. And so seeing all these things as one environment and, and, and looking opportunistically at how to partner between, say, Thames Water and the Royal Parks is something that we think uh, got massive opportunity. And we wanted the um, advice in this document to look broadly at all these issues. Um, and then we've got, as, as Robin said, a number of case studies and um, <clears throat> which are really interesting and we should have had Sheffield in there, but the next, there's going to be, this will be uh, the first of many iterations, I'm sure. Um, but uh, these um, show good design examples that are technically robust. Um, and so, for instance, at one end of the scale, we've got uh, an example of a swale in, in um, Vauxhall Nine Elms. Um, this is very much part of a strategic vision um, with 13 hectares of suds with a population increase projected at 60,000 um, and an existing sewer that's at capacity or over capacity. So there's no, there's no uh, time to just wait and think about it. This is an absolute fundamental part of delivering the regeneration and the public realm of this part of London. Um, Hammersmith and Fulham are doing a massive amount of really good work, taking uh, a retrofit opportunities. Um, so this is geocellular structures going into parking bays um, uh, for attenuation and, and flow control into the combined sewer. Um, I really like this example, which is about almost pump priming communities for the notion of suds. So it's Sustrans working along a quiet way with a school community, looking at street, uh, at calming, traffic calming, doing a little study with some planters as a test bed um, to slow the traffic, and then canvassing opinion about the opportunities for making that a permanent feature, which can then incorporate suds. And there was massive support for that. Then TFL itself has an enormous amount of assets, linear assets, and they, as we've heard before, uh, uh, up in Sheffield, they're, they're a, there's a great opportunity. They also have buildings um, which can be retrofitted with green roofs or green walls. And, um, and a really important part of all this work is that there is effective monitoring that's incorporated into the project in order that we can all collect data and understand um, how the um, system is performing. It's what might be worth saying that um, Embankment Station is going to be getting green walls and uh, green roofs. So it's not just the sort of depots where, uh, as a member of the public, you wouldn't see it, but it's going to be starting to happen on stations and other. And there's a green wall at um, Edgware Road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this is, um, Kevin already talked about this scheme, but I think it's a wonderful scheme running alongside a road. Uh, this is at Priory Common, um, and it's, uh, you know, the benefits are so huge and the investment so minimal. Um, so retrofitting green assets is another example. Um, and then this is a very grand example, um, Rue Garibaldi in Lyon in France, mm. and um, where wholesale carriageway reconfiguration has gone on. They brought the, the street from below ground to surface, using the below ground tunnels for, for rainwater attenuation, and then creating cycleways and pedestrian environments that are, that are magnificent. Um, and so in the, in the, um, in the guide, We've obviously, London's a city like London, any city is full of many, many different environments. So we've taken about eight, well, we've taken eight scenarios which try to capture um, illustratively um, some of the opportunities and um, to illustrate the way in which the SUDS components, whether it's whales, rills, existing trees, new trees, disconnecting downpipes, all the opportunities that we know are there. Uh, to demonstrate the art of the possible in, um, uh, in, in bringing suds 
um, into the everyday life of, of the projects, the regeneration projects in London. Um, so here, here they are. They also incorporate that sense of the below ground infrastructure that, that we've all been talking about, which is challenging, how to overcome that, and, um, and also as well how to, to work on a small or a large scale in terms of civic international spa uh, spaces of international significance as well as back or front gardens, which have a major uh, impact on, um, on the amount of surface water coming off um, the surfaces in our city. Um, and then just to conclude, there's, um, this is one that we're involved in that's actually happening at the moment. This is stop motion, if you like, from August through till a couple of weeks ago. So we've got, we're working with Muff Architecture Art and Arab, um, and it's in Croydon. So we've got soil cells um, below. We've got then permeable paving. It's kind of a layered approach, if you like, in this new civic space called Ruskin Square um, to create what is supposed to allude to Ruskin's drawing room outside. Um, and then we've overlaid with um, routing a zone for, for a major um, group of trees. Um, and in doing that, we've got something like 975 cubic metres of attenuation. Um, as well as all the green infrastructure integrated. Um, so, um, you know, that the final point is about uh, the potential, even what, whatever the demands are, this, this doesn't show, this is being built ahead of development um, to pump prime the area for development. Um, that SUDs so uh, are part of transformational, making transformational space. Uh, and a place to inspire and um, so make places that are beautiful um, uh, and uh, <coughs> basically where there is water, there is life. So even in the most challenging areas where there's going to be massive footfall, it is still possible with advanced planning and the right design team to bring about change. Thank you.